My name is Gail. I'm the oldest daughter of Judson and Margie. It's my sister Dolores that owns the nursery up here. I grew up in my grandmother's home just because I love being with her. She taught me how to do plants. She taught me how to knit. She taught me how to crochet. Um, she read to me. She sang to me. She was a wonderful grandmother. Um, her picture and a little synopsis is in the gift shop um, on the mantel. If y'all could look at that, it would mean a lot. Just knowing that you know the history. Uh, and we're here to talk about dailies today. And, um, okay, I belong to the Mid Carolina Daily Society. Uh, we're always glad to have exciting new members. It is not a fancy society club like it sounds. It's a bunch of daylily farmers that get together and they only talk daylilies. It was years before I knew if this person was an engineer who designed all this stuff overseas or this person was a teacher or that person was, we had several preachers, didn't even know they were preachers for several years, believe it or not. And because um, all we talk is daylilies, it's down to earth and the people are just wonderful. Um, and talking about my club, today we had our 19th annual show. And I just want y'all to know that I am knowledgeable in daylilies. I won Best Extra Large with Ray Anderson. Best Large. Oh, Lord, I can't even remember what it was, but Best Large. Best Small with this flower right here, uh, Make Believe Magic. Best Miniature with Just a Bit, which is over here. Best Spider, which is Curly Cinnamon Windmill, which is over there in that bed with the hydrangea and up at the nursery too. Um, and best in show with my miniature. Um, and I'm most happy about winning with the miniature. Thank you, I was really pleased. Um, a lot of people do not appreciate the miniatures. They tend to be the last thing going out from what we sell at the nursery. Um, but if, try to, I don't have a whole lot but the ones I have I love, and a lot, several of them are right over here, they tend to make up in bloom, in amounts of bloom, what the big ones make up in a single bloom. So it's kind of like a trade-off, multitude versus grandness. Um, but that was our show. It's on, oh, we're over at 3 o'clock if you can make it there. But we have a sale in September, so keep your ears open for that. Okay, the most important thing when you plant daylilies is your dirt. Um, you want your dirt in the sun and you want either to amend it so that it can roll right in your hand, not make a ball and not just sand that sieves through. Um, I'll, it sounds like a commercial, but I'll tell you exactly what I do because a little fella named Clarence Crochet, who was a high school principal in Louisiana, taught me how to make a flower bed. He said, you call the dirt company. You tell them you want dirt. They come to your yard. They back up. You tell them start dumping and drive off slowly. Then you just kind of shuffle it around till it's about 15 inches or so high and plant in it. And being I have yellow clay and shale, that's the best advice anybody ever, ever gave me. And the nursery has wonderful dirt. They will back up their truck and drive off slowly. It has fertilizer, it has micronutrients, it has ant bait. Um, and it's what I have gone to for everything. And I have not been disappointed. Um, okay, dirt. Um, but if you want to amend, you're going to have to take, well, it depends on your type of soil. If you're sandy, you want to throw all the composty kind of things in it you can find. If it's clay, um, one of my daily friends uses a lot of gypsum. And don't ask me, I have no clue what it is. She just uses it to break up the soil and then throws in a lot of compost too. Okay? The next most important thing with growing good daylilies is water. A lot of people, 
and I just smile and, and nod. They go, I just love Dalies. You, they're just so carefree. You don't have to do anything. And I'm like, okay. Um, they, w they generally will not die, but they will not reward you if you are not kind to them. It's sort of a two-way street. And water, um, you have to, what, and a lot of people have a whole lot of trouble understanding what giving a plant water means. Um, your little water bottle, if you pour that on a plant, you have not watered it. Even a hanging basket, you have not watered it. You have misted it. When you water something, check down in the soil, down to your big knuckle, or either get um, a little shovel and go down three inches and make sure your water has gone that far. When I have the rotating sprinklers and it takes a minimum of four hours to penetrate my mulch. Um, so I, generally I water six to eight hours in one area just to get the water down. And that is especially if I have neglected and let it dry a little bit more than I should have. So that, because if you keep things a little bit, it's easier for it to soak on down than if it's just pure arid. Okay? Any water questions? How often do you water? Very good. Depends on the temperature. Last week when it was 100 degrees, I tried to hit everything every other day for those mega hours. Um, but like weather like to 90s, 80s, every three days tops and if I can get by with it once a week. The winter, I don't worry about it at all. Yeah. But the main thing is deep water because if shallow water, your roots stay up here. Then when your sun comes out, it bakes and dries the roots. If you do deep water, your roots go down and that's where you want them because it will sustain your plant better. Okay, fertilizer. Daylilies will bloom and grow if you put nothing on them. However, if you feed them occasionally, they will be very good. Um, I generally like to use an even balanced fertilizer time release. You can't just go and get a can of Osmocote or a can of whatever else. Look at the three numbers. Um, a lot of times when you go in, you will get a high nitrogen. If you don't look and pay attention, that's the first number. The first number is for your green stuff, your leaves. If you're growing hostas and ferns and whatever doesn't have a bloom or grass, you want a high green number. But if you're doing daylilies or other flowering things, you want an even number because the second number is your bloom number. And we want to fertilize our blooms. And the third number is for our roots and stems. And we want strong roots and strong stems. A strong stem daylily stands up. A weak stem daylily <coughs> flops. Um, and that's not guaranteed because you'll see some floppy daylilies around here. But they got fed. Uh, exactly what number do you use? I don't really have a specific number. I think this year they found me 17, 17, 17. A lot of times I'll have 12, 12, 12. I don't get real particular about it. I just want it even. And I don't have a formula, but I throw in, I get a plastic garden cart and I dump in the time release. I dump in some blood meal. I dump in some bone meal. I dump in some Epsom salts. I dump in some ironite. I dump in some diatomaceous earth because it kills slugs. It's a crystal, and when they crawl over it, they slice up. I figure while I'm doing it, I might as well. Um, is there anything else? Is Wayne here? Okay, Daddy, can you think of anything else I might put in it? Because every year I'm trying to desperately think and remember. Um, and I stir it up. And this is the handiest device I've ever found in my life. <laughs> a friend of mine at the Daily Club invented this, and he ought to patent it. But it's a, a broom handle and a measuring cup and duct tape. And you stir your fertilizer mixture up. You get a bucket. You put your fertilizer in it. 
Then you just walk around, you scoop out your fertilizer. Here. You have your plant and you just shake it around your plant and you got some of the leaves and you don't want to do that so you whack it off. <laughs> you have never been over and hurt your back. You can work so much longer with this wonderful item. And the cup size doesn't matter because I've made several and I'm just going through the sizes. And I don't have a specific amount because every plant's a different size. I just try to put a little stuff around every one of them. Do you pull the mulch back when you fertilize? Before, I try to fertilize before I remulch so that it's not thick. But if it's a little thick around there, I take this and scrap. <laughs> I use this to pull it a little bit, but I don't get real bent out of shape. If it's towards the end of the circuit and I'm tired, it's doing good to get fertilizer. When do you fertilize? I like to try to do it in March. Um, I can't say that I always get there in March, but March is an excellent time to do it. After I'd finished going around one time. I mean, July, August. What, fertilizing? Yeah. I don't fertilize, but once a year. Once a year. Once a year. Yeah, I'd, no. Can't do it more than that. No time, no energy. <laughs> and they seem to do okay, and they haven't complained. And you'll also find a lot, there's always two factions in daylilies, and this one says once a year is fine, and don't do it in the fall because they're tired and they need to rest. The other one says spring is good, must do it in fall because they're tired and need the energy. Whatever you want to believe is fine. I just don't want to take the time. Okay, um, okay, let's get on to the flowers here. Um, they always come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. I know y'all know that. But this is a spider. A spider has a certain ratio of thinness to length with the petals. Uh, at first, when I first saw spiders, I thought they were ugly. But the more I look at them, I love this little thing here, the curls. I just love that. Um, all right, this is an unusual form. It can look spidery, but it's not... You notice, too fat to be a spidery. Um, so it's an unusual form. Unusual forms don't have to be big, they can be small. Spiders can be big or small. Um, I just, that's cute. Brer Rabbit's baby, is that not cute? <laughs> um, all right. This hasn't doubled a whole lot, but this is Peggy Jeffcoat. Um, and the hotter it gets, the more a double will double. And she's just getting started. You'd think she would be doubling out the wazoo after last week, yeah. but uh, <laughs> she, she lives right here and up at the nursery. And it's a, a real award-winning day, Lily. It's won many, many, many awards. Uh-huh. And she lives in Blythewood, and she also has a place you can buy daylilies. That's cause you know where she was? At the show. She won the sweepstakes on most blue ribbons. Oh, wow. Yes, okay. This is called the bitone because dark and light. These are petals, these are sepals, okay? And you have four, st six stamens and a pistil. If, while well, I'm at it, if you want to do your own breeding, you take one of the fuzzy stamens, go to another flower, and just dab it on the pistol till it looks nice and yellow. And then it may form a seed pod. What do you bag it? If you're really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you label it with what you crossed with it. Um, this is a lot extra large. Okay, good. Extra large. This is a large. See the difference? Can I ask a question about what you did? If you don't, if they're just right next to each other, is there any possibility that they make? Oh them? yes, we'll okay. get into that. I okay. promise. <laughs> this is a medium or small. 
Uh, all right. This is a miniature. This is Ethel May Anderson. Mary Ethel Anderson, excuse me. Mary Ethel Anderson. She's one of my most favorite little flowers because it takes the frost to kill her from blooming. She is short and little and just blooms and blooms and blooms and blooms and blooms. It's like the little Energizer Bunny. <laughs> and it's so pretty. It passed Mary Ethel around. <laughs> and she's got my grandmama's name. This one, um, Peach Emerald is a polychrome, which means when you look at the petals, you see gold, you see some pink tones, you see some yellow, you see some coral tones. Look at that. Um, okay. This one, I didn't check. Some of them that have this gold edge here, when you get in the sun, you can kind of wiggle around and it will actually look like it has glitter all around the edge. And also you can get in the sun and see some of them, we call it diamond dusting, the whole daily looks like it's frosted in glitter. But this gold glitter is just absolutely incredible. Um, and this, the edge, if you'll notice all these knobs and curls and twists and things, they were so proud when they came out with this, the hybridizers, when it started showing up. And now they've got some that are all about three-fourths of an inch. You've got three-fourths of an inch of this. They call it chicken fat, which makes it sound ugly, but it really does look like that. <laughs> this day lily has an eye. You can see the eye right in here. Um, a lot of them have eyes, also have edges, but you see a little bit of an edge starting here. Uh, but you'll see some that it goes all the way around. But that's just another type. <sighs> oh yeah, and see how this one has the light edge. No eye, but a light edge. Okay, we were talking about seeds. Okay, cross your pistols and your stamens, make a record, um, and then you get a seed pod. Well, if most of you are like me, you walk around the garden and you'll see this. And this is like your children. You have a father, you have a mother. Your kids may look like one of y'all kind of, sort of, but they're never going to be a clone. And that's the way daylilies are. The seeds are always different from the parents. Uh, they may look a lot like it, but it's impossible for them to be exactly like the mother plant. Um, therefore, unless you are hybridizing or making a special effort with your daylilies to see what you can do and do it in a knowing fashion, I always recommend taking your seed pods off because invariably uh, they'll develop, the seeds will fall on the ground, you've paid money for a daylily, and then here comes another little one beside it and all of a sudden you can't remember which one is the one that's right and which one is the one that came from seed and you'll be happier if you keep track because you don't want to spend twenty thirty dollars on a day lily and then this little runt come up <laughs> and the old there's a couple of different older kinds uh, that sometimes the um, traits revert back that when they, like the daylilies today, they multiply by going at the base and getting bigger. Well, those daylilies ran. And a lot of times, in order to run, they would put out a little bit of poison at the tip of their roots to kill what was in front of them to make room for themselves. And um, have you ever heard of somebody going, I had all kind of colors of daylilies and all I got is yellow now? That's what happened. The bullies made room for themselves. Then how far apart do you plant? Well, these these won't do that. The new hybridizers won't do that. But if you got the old kind, I I would recommend putting them in a space where you don't mind. Uh, when you when you see them moving, you 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 know pull up. What's moving? Yeah, you can put a barrier down. You can put a dig up, take the bottom out of a pot, put them in the you know a big ground pot, and just sink it in the ground. Um, anything like that. 
But I generally, I, it's so much trouble to contain things. I try to put what I know is going to grow where I don't care that it grows. I try to garden easy. But um, yeah, oregano, not an oregano, spearmint, peppermint, they go in pots. Deadheading. The, all right. The nursery and some great friends helped me deadhead yesterday. <laughs> And um, we, so today you're seeing only live blooms unless they miss something. Uh, tomorrow, every one of these blooms will be dead, and a new set will be here. Uh, the purpose of deadheading is to make your garden look neater and more attractive, and so you don't form seed pods. Um, I can't say I deadhead every day. I've only deadheaded twice so far this year, and that's when I had a pile of people to help me. Um, but I do go, and if I see a seed pod, pop it off. Um, but it's an aesthetic thing, and a lot of times a dead bloom will fall over onto a bud, and then it tries to open, and it can't. It can't have its day in the sun. It, and I so I, I try to clean those off. Okay, did he? Okay, dividing. Oh, this is gonna be great fun. Okay. Um, we have two kinds of gloves at the nursery. These are more waterproof. You can tell I use them. And these are my favorites of all times. I deadhead in these gloves. I wear the, these gloves breathe with me. They fit well. I have never seen a pair of gloves any better than these. And I use maybe two pair for the whole season. And that's because I have to wash one. But to divide a day lily, Yeah, I'm gonna come up here. The first thing you want to do oh. It's easy. You want to do the rest? <laughs> it's easy. Oh, we have these two. They're cool. And we have little tiny ones that can work with deadheading other flowers. Okay, and the reason you cut all that off and hurt your feelings, well generally I don't do it till fall so there's none of the flowers on it, is because it's very unwieldy to try to divide with all of that there. And if you're trying to have a stable plant, you've got this thing going like this and it could break off at the crown and then you might lose your daylily. Okay? Then you dig it out oh, here. You dig it out of the ground with one of these. This is the best ground digger ever. It's sturdy, it's heavy, and you put it in, you pry it back, and you save roots versus using a shovel because you go in, you chop your roots off. If you have nice loose dirt like you should in your flower bed, this just, you go around as many times as you need. Sometimes just one time in will pop it right out. But I love this little thing. And then you have your daylily. Okay. Now, the first thing you want to do is get all the dirt off of it. Literally all the dirt off of it. And this may be hard because I didn't want to set up the hose. And you want to get all the dirt off so you can divide it better. And this is a lovely device. You can see it used to be even. <laughs> but it's great for whacking in the ground. You hit a root, you turn it over, you chop it off. You find a baby snake, you chop it off. <laughs> It, it's multitudinous purposes. Now you see this has grown in the pot a long time. All right, when you're doing a really good job, you take it to your sprinkler or your hose, whatever. You get all this dirt off. And then what you can pry loose or wiggle loose, you do that. What you can't, you do not get a knife, you do not get a hatchet. You will chop your fingers off. You get this man-sized flat-headed screwdriver. And 
You pick a spot that looks good, stick it in, and pry it. Then you're able to wiggle it. And then sometimes it comes again, okay? Now, um, one fan is, is good, but you'll get faster growth if you leave two fans, but sometimes they just fall apart and don't worry about it. And what you do is you clean everything. All the dead, all the dead leaf stuff here comes off. And you know how they have little hairs around here? Pull all the little hairs off. Y'all do know what I'm talking about, the little hairs. See right here, those little hairs. Pull those off. I'm not going to worry about this. Well, here. Okay. Then... And the reason you wash it is to make sure you don't um, replant some germs if there are any and to help you find dead material and get any dead material out. Sometimes up under here it'll be some rotteny stuff. Pull that out. The um, reason you don't want it is because it might contribute to a root rot which would be the, about the only reason you ever lose a daylily. Uh-huh. Some people do. I try to have the patience to let them dry before I put them back in the ground. Um, I can't say I always do, but I try to have the, especially if I've got um, a new break, right, like right here. That's where your germs are going to get on. And if you let it dry to what, you know, you know how it looks when it's dry. And then put it in, you've kind of gotten a scab over it and you have a better shot of not getting any. Uh, when, okay. Now, my roots are a little long. You just whack them off till you have a good little size root thing here. And you dig a hole and okay, you got a hole. Make an ant like an ant mound in the middle of your hole, a little volcano. Then I think I'm, you take the daylily and put it on that little ant mound volcano, spread the roots down, and then cover the dirt right to the top of the root right here. You've got your roots going deep, but you have not got your daylily deep. Um, it's, daylilies it, don't like to be more than an inch in the ground. Uh, they tend to rot sometimes if they do that. Um, or not bloom as well, so you want to have them shallow, not seeing the roots, but they're right when there. When the stalks turn dark, you can clip them off, or when the blooms fade out, you can clip them. If you leave them, it won't hurt anything. If you cut them, it won't hurt anything. Okay? Um, you can plant a daylily anytime, but I don't like to plant in the hot sun because I don't like it. I prefer to plant in the um, early spring before April or wait until it cools off in September, especially to dig. Um, but I can't say that I, you know, always do what I say I, I like to do because right now is the prime time for buying them. And if I bought one, I would plant it. Yeah. But I would try to have my bed ready so that I didn't have a plant in a pot I had to worry about keeping watered or at some of the um, nurseries uh, they bear root they give you the bare root plant like this and you know you can't putz around you've got to put it in the ground at some point um, so I try to have the bed ready at least if I know I'm going to get a daylily anything else? okay now when you tour the yard, I know a lot of you have heard this before, if it looks like a path, it is a path. If it looks like maybe it's a path, it's not a path. <laughs> is that good sense? <laughs> okay, uh, just make yourselves at home. You can stay here. Um, if you're here at dark, I'll give you a flashlight.